Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice, a very nice trigonometric expression. Pretty quick, fun and simple. We have sine x equals cosine x. Now, this problem is probably trivial for most people, but I wanted to make a video on this because I'll be presenting quite a few methods. I don't know how many at this point, but I'm just going to get started and hopefully uh, we'll count how many methods we can come up with. And not all of those methods uh, may be complete because that's going to take a long time. Anyways, we have sine x equals cosine x and let's see how we can handle this. And I'm pretty sure you know how to handle this. If you've done a little bit of trigonometry, you should have a good idea. Anyway, so this problem is pretty much uh, picked for demonstrating multiple, multiple solutions to a single problem. And I think that's helpful. I know some people don't like it. They're like, okay, I can do this in one minute. But uh, if you think about the general public, I hope it is going to be beneficial. Anyways, I talk too much. I should get started. Now, at the end, I'm going to show you a graph uh, that also explains what is going on. Okay, let's get started with the first method and see how many methods we can come up with. Okay, so my first method is going to be, I don't know what it's going to be. Let's start with something, right? Okay, so when I have something like sine x equals cosine x, one of the things I can do is turn cosine into sine. Okay, so here's what I can do. Sine x equals cosine x. Cosine of the, what is it called? Complement, right? That's what I'm going to do. If two angles add up to 90 degrees, then you can say the following. If alpha plus beta is 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, then we can safely say that sine alpha is the same as cosine beta. Now, at this point, you can basically replace uh, cosine beta with sine pi over 2 minus beta because that is the same thing as alpha. Make sense? I hope it does. This is the idea that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to turn the cosine into sine of pi over 2 minus x. Easy, right? Okay, cool. Hopefully we started with an easy, straightforward method. Now we have signs on both sides. That's good. So I can go ahead and eliminate the signs and just set these equal to each other with a little addition of the multiples of 2 pi because that's just going to rotate and we have to consider it because when we collect x's on the same side we're going to have 2x so we're going to divide by 2 and that's going to be equivalent to adding multiples of pi not multiples of 2 pi. Make sense? So this is going to be one of the solutions. It's not the whole thing. There's another one I believe and that comes from so when you think about the sign uh, you have to consider the two quadrants, first and second, they have the same sign, and the third and fourth, obviously. So when you subtract an angle from pi, its sign does not change. So I can go ahead and subtract this angle from pi, and its sign is going to be the same. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Sine x is equal to sine of pi minus pi over 2 minus x. So I kind of have to write it like this. And then from here we get x equals pi minus pi over 2 is pi over 2 minus minus is going to be a plus x plus 2k pi. x cancels out and then we get a 0. This is kind of meaningless, right? We don't get any x values from here. Maybe that was the only solution, right? Okay. Anyways, so let's see how we can continue with this problem. And you also have to think about it this way. If I add n pi to this, I'm going to get uh, the next value. Anyways, let's just continue. So another method could be something like this. And I, like I said, not, um, not all methods are going to be incomplete. Sorry, this is going to be a little disorganized because my goal is to present multiple methods within hopefully, I don't know, 8, 10 minutes. So the second method could be the following. I have sine x equals cosine x. Let's divide both sides by cosine x. And I don't want cosine x to be 0, so let's go ahead and take note. Cosine x should not equal 0. And then from here we get something super duper nice, tangent x equals 1. So we got tangent x equals tangent pi over 4. Let's continue. This gives us x equals pi over 4, and then I just need to add multiples of pi to it, so I can just add k pi. And guess what? This gives us pretty much the same solution, not pretty much, the exact same solution that we got earlier, right? But is just a different approach. We use tangent instead of sine. All right, so that's my second method. Here's the third method. 
So for my third method, I'm going to do the following. Let me rewrite the original problem. Sin x equals cosine x. Now, here's what I'm thinking. I want to put both uh, on the same side. So let's go ahead and subtract cosine x and set it equal to 0. And then I just want to do the following. I want to write the cosine x as 1 times cosine x because now I'm going to replace the 1 with something. And that is going to be tangent pi over 4 because as you know tangent pi over 4 is 1 so I can do it. But why would you do it? Like what is the motivation? Well the motivation is I'm going to turn this into the sine or cosine of a difference or sum. Make sense? I hope it does. So sine x now tangent pi over 4 can be written as sine pi over 4 over cosine pi over 4 and that multiply by cosine of x equals 0. Now you can go ahead and multiply both sides everything by cosine pi over 4. That's going to give you sine x times cosine pi over 4 minus sine pi over 4 times cosine x is equal to 0. And from here, left hand side looks like sine A cosine B minus sine B cosine A. Hopefully you know this identity. This is sine of X minus pi over 4. Great. This is an identity, the sum and difference formulas. Now what, what am I getting from here, right? Well, if sine of something is equal to 0, then there are two possibilities on the unit circle. If you think about it, it's either pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 right so x minus pi over 4 can only be pi over 2 and from here you get x equals 2 pi 3 pi over 4 or x minus pi over 4 is equal to 3 pi over 2 which is 6 and then from here you're going to get x equals 7 pi over 4. Of course we have to make sure that cosine pi over 4 is not 0 but it's not 0. So we're good. <laughs> okay, so that gives us another solution. This time I didn't find the general solutions. I just found uh, particular solutions. Okay, let's take a look at the fourth method and we'll probably finish with the fifth maybe. As you can see, there is uh, quite a few different ways you can approach this problem. Another way to approach this problem is going to be replacing cosine again with replacing cosine with sine pi over two minus x and then you can go ahead and use the difference to product formulas which is kind of hard to memorize. So this formula is nice because it allows us to turn the difference into a product which is equal to zero and then you can look at each factor. Make sense? Okay quickly fifth method. I just want to mention this real quick. I know I don't want to take forever obviously. So we have sine x equals cosine x. Now not all methods are uh, going to be uh, straightforward because sometimes you have to check your solutions. At the end you should always do that. So I'm going to do the following. Why not square both sides? And you might be asking like why and I'm like going to say why not? <laughs> Let's do it. Well actually there's a good reason behind it. Uh, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. That's why. Make sense? Okay I think that's good enough. So we know that the sum of the squares is 1. So by squaring both sides, of, of course, I am introducing extraneous solutions. So you have to be extraneously careful. Okay, let's see. So I can replace one of these with the other. So maybe which one? I don't know. Let's replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared x. And then set it equal to cosine squared. Put cosine squared on the same side and divide by 2. You're going to get cosine squared x equals 1 half. And by square rooting, you get two solutions. Cosine x is 1 over root 2 or cosine x is negative 1 over root 2. Uh-oh, we got two solutions, but get, guess what? I, as I told you earlier, you have to make sure that these solutions satisfy the original equation. But here's the thing. If sine and cosine are the same, then I can use the fact that, hey, if cosine x is 1 over root 2, then sine is going to be the same, and sine is going to be the same. So if I think about which angle is going to satisfy this, I'm, I'm thinking about two quadrants where Cosine and sine are both positive or both negative, and that tells me right away, hopefully it tells you too, the first and the third quadrant, right? So we're talking about two angles here, pi over 4 and pi over 4 plus pi. And this brings us to the end of the video, but let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick and then we'll finish up. So the graph of sine x and cosine x, their intersection at several points, infinitely many points, gives you all the solutions, but some of the solutions are missing. Why? Let's, uh, why don't you find out and let me know. 
This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.